You cultist. I'm Mikey, the E stands for evil. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. Tonight we have I'm Not Scared by Kane Coffee. So, Still my favorite kind of coffee. Yes. Um, so we did, last couple of episodes we've been doing fairly long ones. So we decided to take a quick, a, just a, like a minor breather and look for, and I decided to look for a, a short pasta. And I found out, and like, we've been doing Kane Coffee stories for the last couple of months. Like, we did Red Christmas, and we did um, January Shadow. Uh, so I was like, oh, we'll give like, this other story a try. It was either this one or Jeff the Killer 2015. Hey. Um, uh, <laughs> what? So, yeah, he did a rendition of, he did his own, like, rendition of Jeff the Killer. Of a oh, Jeff that's the Killer unfortunate. Story. Um, yeah, so I decided not to torture my co-host with the Jeff the Killer story. I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, and so we're going to do a, uh, a shorter pasta today uh and that is i'm not scared uh so i'm not scared uh literally is just starting off as the narrator saying that he's not scared um even though he has zombies uh, surrounding him in a zombie invested world um and initially he wouldn't like he's he stayed in his room because he didn't want to become infected but eventually he realized he was running out of food so he became a little more adventurous to go outside and like get food and he realized that the Zombies were not going like attacking him, even though they had multiple opportunities to do so. Uh, and in fact, were basically kind of like leaving him alone, like didn't want to have anything to do with him. So this eventually became kind of a Monday. Zombies suddenly became more of a mundane thing to him because he basically could, would go out and grab food and come back, and then went to his work, his place of work, and just started working in peace because nobody would bother him, mm-hmm. and would get his check every week by uh, by a zombie. Um, and basically did that for about a year or so before he started realizing that these people aren't actually zombies or they're not undead in the conventional sense that pop culture is kind of brought on is that like, they're not like the walking corpses or something like that. Like they're not, they're, they're they aren't the walking dead. We are the walking dead. (laughs) I've never seen that show, but I know that. (laughs) We are the walking dead. Uh, he does a very, he does a line like that. It's like we are the undead. <laughs> um, sorry, it's yeah. a way to spoil it. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he basically finds out, realizes that like people, like these people aren't like zombie zombies. They are just dead inside, basically. Like like their their souls are sh- are like are tainted by something, or like are are just gone. So they're just, essentially saying all human souls at, deep down have something tainted with them. So everyone is technically undead. Yeah, and so like they're all just like drones for the machine or something like that. Kind of. Kind of mentality, like that kind of analogy for this, um, of like society, basically, like we're a society of zombies, of zombified people. Um, and he realizes he's infected too. Uh, he's also one of the undead. We are the undead. <laughs> is literally a line from this, uh, from this, uh, from the story. Yeah. Um, and then he just kind of goes outside and joins his fellow undead and just keep marching off into the sunset. And that, that's basically where the story ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, it was a quick story. <laughs> Um, Appreciate it. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, uh, grammar, not, grammar positions, because they all expect it at this point. I have none. So, Mikey, these since real. Uh, I have a front end. Ooh. <laughs> like, are you excited for it now? <laughs> I, I just put I just, I've, I've, I've leaned into it. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> How many episodes does it take? <laughs> 230, or 240-ish? Mm-hmm. 238. We're approaching 240. <laughs> oh, technically 240 if you count some of the, spe- the part twos that we've done. Because sometimes I've, I've done like two, 230, uh, or like 200 and whatever part one, and then 200 or point five. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I don't know if that's accurate, especially with all the, uh, like... Oh, God, all the specials. Yeah. yeah. You should give me an accurate... It doesn't matter. Go. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you go. Those glassy... Lifeless eyes that always turned and stared at me was a perfect example of how undead they were. And it was then that I realized something, too. Okay. So that second and was a front yeah. end. It could have just been like a like a comma there. Or we'll just remove the end and yeah. make it yeah. a new sentence because the yeah. previous sentence was long enough. Yeah. 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 
Okay. And that's all I have. All right. Gamer. And that's all I have. Cool. All right. All right. Hey, actual thoughts. <clears throat> Apparently, I was the only one keeping that segment alive. Yeah. Does that nope. mean I'm in the nitpick nook now? You are indeed, sir. <laughs> I handed you the crown. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Title card is in play. Is is envisioned. <laughs> that will immediately forget as soon yes. as we turn. I'm making no way. Quickly write that down. <laughs> yeah, but that, this doesn't sync though. Remember I was talking about that. No, yeah, right, right. I'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. So on to actual plots. Um, I ventured outside the door, carefully walking down the street to the market. The beasts did not nothing but glance at me with those ne- with those same glassy eyes. Yet they didn't attack. In fact, most of the time, they stayed far away. It was as if they were scared of me. Would have been a common but interesting twist if it had turned out that he was the only undead creature. Like, and even and everyone else was normal. And so we have kind of like an outsider um, uh, situation going on where, like, the thing, the, the creature, the thing, who thinks he's human, goes out and sees all these terrifying alien-looking things... And then you, re- the, you as a reader realize that he's the only one that's actually the mo- the creature, the alien thing, and everyone else is normal. Mm-hmm. Um, just like a suge- like an idea that kind of popped in my head as I was reading this part of the story. Um, they wouldn't be ignoring him if he's a monster, though. Well, no, they were no, they were like uh, it was as if they were scared of him, so like they were like kind of like just shirking away from him, mm-hmm. like, keeping yeah. the distance, right? Oh, that's mm-hmm. true. Um, I'm not saying I mean, like he wouldn't have like. Because it doesn't have to be a like a totally alien thing. He could look like a zombie, mm-hmm. um, like in the sense of like a zombie. But it's just like people were just like, uh, "What the hell's wrong with this guy?" Yeah, <laughs> distance. Mm-hmm. Um, where is? Oh yeah. So the next thing I have. Uh, eventually, I became adventurous enough to uh, return to my workplace, only to find that the undead had taken over. Yet, just like the others among this, my street, none of them none of them cared. I was able to work in peace. I would get my paycheck at the end of the week by one of them as he spoke to me in a monotone voice that I tuned out. So this scene was kind of comedic to me. Um, like, I just imagined, A, uh, he's actually just had some mental stint where he sees everyone as undead things, but it's not actually happening like that. So, like, his fellow employees are on, on, off to the side, like off screen kind of thing, are just going, hey, what's up with him? Oh, he's just got back from stress leave. Sure is quiet now. Like, as he just, like, went on stress leave because <laughs> he, he had a mental breakdown mm-hmm. then returned, but sees everybody like that, but it's really just like, like, people are just like, huh, what's wrong with Jim? <laughs> he's been a lot quieter since that mental break. Um, or B. Also, his name is Nair. Yes, uh, Nair, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, or Mr. B. Nair Ederman. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, or B. The zombies are like those from Hotel Transylvania, and they're just mundane as hell and ha- completely harmless to, uh, to like humans. So, but they're still undead creatures. Like they're still like gooey undead creatures. So it's just like, here's her paycheck. <laughs> like I just envision like one of the, the Hotel Transylvania like bellhop zombies, just like mm-hmm. <laughs> not threatening whatsoever. Pretty much. Um, and then my next note. They weren't undead. None of these people, not one of them, were the textbook movie version of zombies, or undead. These people were very much alive. Their hearts were beating. Their, breath, their breathing was fine. You know, the story did make me question the word undead. When you look at it plainly, undead is the same, isn't it just the same as not dead? Or alive? Like, like pop cult, really, pop, only pop culture has ingrained in us the idea that the undead are uh, is a zombie or a moving corpse. I don't know because this little story has been waxing philosophical while I was reading it. It just kind of made me want to wax philosophical a little bit. Essentially, <laughs> if they were never coined as undead, if I said that you are inde- undead, you'd you be know. like, "Yes, I am not dead. Thank you." Yes, exactly. Yeah. That, that, no. <laughs> No, you're, no I know. you're wrong because <laughs> you're wrong. No, you need a little more. The more. definition of undead is something that is dead and moving as though it shouldn't be. So wouldn't that be a a redead? <laughs> it's just what pop culture and society have made you think, man. 
He'd be part of the drone society of the zombies. <laughs> sure it is. No, he'd be... I, like, the, just, just a quick side. Yeah, I'm completely, like, not... I'm not committed to that. <laughs> just, it just, yeah, the story does kind of have that, like... I figured as much. Social commentary of, like, we are, we are actually just drones. Like, we are the zombies because of our existence in our society. And just, like, wow. What is even undead? But just alive. <laughs> Pretty much. We're all alive. That's right. We are all alive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that a is that a video game? <laughs> I think it's called I Am Alive. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. But to answer your yes. um, your mind blowing re dead situation theory, no, that's if some essentially something's alive, it's dead, it becomes undead as a zombie, and then if you kill it, then it's re dead because it's dead twice. Yeah, it died, it died both tabs. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. I can buy that. Uh, but then immediately after that, like that paragraph, or that quote I did, <clears throat> we have this quote. They had no physical injuries, yet at the same time, they were undead. Doesn't this contradict your statement otherwise in the story about them having mutilated bodies? Yep. Unless... This is the normal world seeping into the narrator's viewpoint, as uh, like, and he's still like he's seeing everything as undead. And this is the one instance where like the rea- where reality actually kind of like flooded back into his vision. Mm-hmm. So we start seeing people less unmutilated and corpse-like, mm-hmm. or he's becoming more and more infected, so they're seeming more and more natural to him. Oh yeah, because now he's like so, okay, so he's the, he's still a zombie, but like now he's becoming more zombie. There, like, he's not seeing everybody as or. Sorry, he wasn't infected before, but he's becoming more infected, and so his vision's becoming more zombie uh, vision. Essentially, yeah. Gotcha. I feel like we're getting strangely into warm bodies territory, and I don't know if I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, that was that movie that was I that never movie? saw because it's disgusting. <laughs> it was that like monster romance movie. It's a little weird. Like, it, was yeah. like twi- it was like a Twilight kind of st- yeah. like genre style movie where, like, monster romance. Yep. <clears throat> Anyway, um, yeah, let's <laughs> move right along from that. Um, so, <laughs> like we said earlier in the narration, with uh, the uh, the we are we are the Walking Dead. Oh, did I take your quote? <laughs> we are all undead deep down inside. Our souls are tainted by death and grief, by ha- heartbreak and rejection. I too am undead, and have been for a long time. I have never wanted to admit it. All this time, I was infected. So, I kind of like this statement, if you suppose that this guy is in fact a Lala, which I don't actually know if that's actually the term for it, but the ter- what I'm basically is like, the, the person in a zombie apocalypse that has gone native, in quotes, and started acting like a zombie as a mental coping mechanism. So, like, basically, um, uh, uh, a, a person that is, like, I am among my people, like, he's, he's basically gone, like, post-traumatic, or, not post-traumatic, um... What's the one thing where you start joining the enemy's team when you've been uh, held hostage? Oh, um... <clears throat> oh, shit. Right? <laughs> it's like something syndrome. Um, so, so is it like uh, Bill Murray in Zombieland? Kind of like Bill Murray in Zombieland, um, but like with a little bit with like this like kind of... Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome, yes. <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome. We're like, staring we're at a like, wall <laughs> for like 10, 30 seconds or something. Where, where it's just like, where, where you're like, this guy's a survivor in the zombie apocalypse that's happened. And he actually isn't infected, but he's, for some reason the zombies aren't also going near him, maybe because he's starting to act like them. Um, and it's all just kind of a psychological thing for him. Like he's just like a, again, like he's just thinks that he's one, but he's not actually one. Mm-hmm. Um, or he's immune to it, or he's a carrier or something. Exactly, yeah, like he's a, immune or a carrier, so the zombies don't go after him. But he's still actually technically a normal human being, but he starts thinking that he's, it's basically because of the post-traumatic stress syndrome and the Stockholm syndrome of like the, being in an apocalypse and, surround, and being completely isolated mm-hmm. by nothing, by any, uh, comp- like to any human, actual human contact. Yeah. Um, he just decides to, well, if you can't beat him, let's join him, kind of thing. Pretty much. Um, I think that's an interesting, like, it's an interesting idea to take for the story if you take it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's my actual thoughts until we go to final thoughts. So, Mikey, these things for you. Alright. So, my first thought is a speculation that I had after reading the first sentence. Okay. So, the first sentence is, I'm surrounded by the undead, and yet I'm not scared. 
dot 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 because I'm one of them. That's what yeah. I, my mind went to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on we find out. Yep. Yep. He was. Yeah. He, was well, he wasn't one all well, along, or he may yeah. not. He may not have been one all along. He might have been, or he just real came to that realization a lot later on. Mm-hmm. Or maybe because he went back to like work and started working among them, he caught the virus. <laughs> Or it's Looney Tunes logic, like you don't fall unless you realize you can fall. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> makes sense to me. <laughs> and then the sign comes up. It's like I'm infected. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. So the the next, uh, I have another few quotes. Okay. That sort of pertain. Well, the the first one is because of the ending. So, I look outside at the streets and watch them shamble around, emitting guttural groans and moans. Their bodies have been mutilated and their souls extinguished into nothing. Their lifeless eyes glance over to me <coughs> and stare for a while. And this is before we have the... Revelation that they're actual people and not undead. Yeah, these actual people, yeah. Yeah, and it's just like that. Your story is exploding on itself <laughs> to me. Okay, like when I read the ending, I was like, "Well, that contradicts yeah. what was stated earlier." And it instead of having a revelation at the end, the story just blew itself out of the water. Oh. And exploded or imploded. I mean, maybe like word. it could be like again, it could be like a non-conventional zombie infection, like infection kind of thing, where mm-hmm. like they're they they don't actually get you by biting you or like or like that. Like they actually like it's like kind of like a mimetic thing or something, or like by yeah. glaring at you, they're like they're basically enforcing their their aura upon you, like a necrotic aura of some kind. Like maybe it should, maybe he literally is just because it gets infected by exposure. By like non non yeah. uh, non physical exposure, just like have like a radiation they give off or something. They're actually ra- astro zombies, which are radioactive. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, also, let me put this out to you: if this was laid out in a journal format, would it be better? Because um, you would see day to day how he's changing, and that's how his opinions can change. Because it's been days or weeks or months, so yeah. It'd be that could be why it's so different at the end than the beginning. Yeah, yeah, because. Uh, the way the story is written right now, it's we are he already knows the outcome. Yeah. Like, whereas if we do a journal format, like we start off with like I don't know what's going on, and then as it goes on, we get that progression. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like by the end, it kind of seems like after his revelation, what a revelation! Uh, after that, he um, sits down his computer, writes this, puts it on the internet, and walks out. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm joining my people now. I must go. My people need me. (laughs) See, the journal format, I think, would work. All right. Personally. And then, just going to thinking on the lines of a undead apocalypse. Yes. So, he stays inside for days and weeks, and then he begins to run out of food. Yeah. And he goes to the grocery store. That food's spoiled. Unless the zombies are maintaining social infrastructure, yeah. In which case, is that really a zombie? Is that really an apocalypse or just yeah. a dystopia? An undead dystopia yeah. where like people people have got, become undead, like mindless drone creatures, but they're still um, keeping in, uh, social in- infrastructure and like uh, deliveries and whatnot alive. Or it's like if all they turned into ghouls. <laughs> yeah, like if, yeah, or if they all became ghouls, or like. Again, basically just became ant people. Like, and I don't mean like ant like m- bred with people, but I mean like the hive mind people, or like drone people. Um, kind of like how the story was kind of showing. It's like, well, yeah, they're just they're just drones on the inside because of society. They're smart enough to hand them a paycheck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're yeah, smart so enough to run a yeah, store. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're smart enough to run a, a pay, to have him give him a paycheck and like for allowing him to work. So and people are working in the like zombies yeah, are working yeah. in the office as well <laughs> in the cubicles. So very again another nice analogy to like uh, office work. Mm, pretty much, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's just like uh, so this this apocalypse really isn't an apocalypse so much no. as it's just a dystopia. 
Yeah, and that's what I was thinking, because, I mean, he goes to the grocery store. Like, does he pay for the food? <laughs> At this point, it seems like it by the it's, end. It's yeah. less Mad Max. Or, uh, it's, le- it's less Road Warrior and more Mad Max. Because the first Mad Max movie was actually not an apocalypse. Yeah, it was a dystopia. It was leading up to the apocalypse. So like it was leading up to the like, thing. So pe- people were still living in society. It was a shitty society, but they were still living. Yeah. And then in the next one, everything was desert. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and some shit happened between movie one and two. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, and then my next thought, which you sort of explained uh, the answer already, is they they let him take months off of work. Without firing him. Yeah, you know what that is? That's called stress leave. As yeah. somebody who has, who has seen multiple employee, uh, like fellow employees go on stress leave for multiple reasons, like that, that is, they can go on for months. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yeah. But it's just... <laughs> yeah, you would know you're going on stress leave, and then it's like, oh yeah, I can go back to work. And I mean, then you, you, you we don't know like, what happened to this guy. Had, this guy, this guy, may be a little bit more delusional than the than, and maybe that's a, like a yeah. symptom of his stress leave, like why he went on stress leave because he started to look like delusion things. There's no way I just burped that properly. No, you did not. Yeah. <laughs> but I get what you're saying. Like, yeah. let's say. He watched some zombie movie, and it really affected him to the point that he's believing that everyone else is a zombie. Yeah. So when he goes into work the next day, he's like, <laughs> oh. he, yeah, he has like a gun with him. It's like, <laughs> oh, you know, wouldn't we know that would basically be like. You're I don't mean to shoot, that. but like. No, but like, even if you brought a gun to the office, you're fired. Oh, yeah, that's true. But yeah, you like, if he just like basically freaked out and like had a mental break, yeah. the, the, the school, the office, the school, the office, or. The, the business management. or the place, yeah, management would put him on, on stress leave for the time being. Yeah. Especially if he was a decent worker beforehand. Mm-hmm. They'd want to keep him, so yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> you don't bring a gun to the, the office like, oh, oh, oh Jim, you, you need to go on a stress leave. <laughs> it's like, no, it's like, Jim, you're fired. <laughs> and you're going to, you're the, here's the police, they're going to take you away. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that, that is not a thing that you, that would get you stress leave. Yes. <laughs> It depends if this is a... Um, Rational world or not. Yes, exactly. Like, for example, if this was in the fucking realm of uh, Last Action Hero or something, where it's like super 80s kind of movie all the time. Yeah. And it'd be like, whatever. <laughs> you want to be a farmer? He has a couple of acres. <laughs> so weird. Just kicks have you not heard that before? <laughs> I'm sure I have, but I tuned it out. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> <laughs> or when the guy, or when the, or the the villain guy gets like, uh, like a, a ice cream truck blows up behind them, uh, and like the guy just gets impaled in the back of the head with an ice cream cone, and just like iced that guy code of phrase. <laughs> so funny! Oh my god! All right, anyway, yes. Back to the, the back to the back to the story and your your thoughts. All right, and then. Uh, Here's the a quote from when he's talking about the one guy that he sees. Uh, his eyes were looking nowhere but forward, and his skin was mutilated by scars that could never be fixed. Mental scars, and the scars given by time. Uh, so wrinkles? Yeah. <laughs> so he's old, and he's got a hundred yard stare. So. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, thinking about it, like s- some or a lot of mental scars can technically be fixed. That's why we have psychiatrists and psychologists. Yeah. So it's like ah. <laughs> to to say never be fixed. It's like okay, well, a misnomer. L- it's a layman term. Kind yeah. of thing. Like it's it's for effect. Um, yeah. But yes, it, like. <laughs> Also, if he never goes to a psychiatrist, then we're going to get fixed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the wrinkles will just stay there. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're just like plastic surgery and shit. They, <laughs> they can go away. There's, right. youth, there's, youth, there's, there's skin, uh, uh, skin medication you can take to get rid of wrinkles and stuff. Creams. Sure. All right. So. Sorry. And then uh, I was thinking, like, based on the end, where are the cars? <laughs> like. Is this some strange future where cars don't exist because we ran enough gasoline? 
Oh, wow, so my Mad Max uh, reference was a little bit accurate. <laughs> and you can go to work if you want to. And groceries are free for everyone, as long as you don't take more than you need. What socialist hell do we live in? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then, it's the Star Trek universe, then? It's like... <laughs> and, I don't know. And it, <laughs> in, in Star Trek, uh, there is no currency. You can you just get what you uh, what you need. I'm not going to ask how that works because I'm sure fabricators. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like someone's running a store. Uh, it's all it's all for the betterment of of, human, of, of society. It's not. It's mm-hmm. it is actually a so I think it actually is a socialist uh, society. <laughs> and like, basically, it's like you you. Um, so like, if I want a starship, I just ask for it. They no, give you, it have to to, you have to you have to like tr- uh, train and like be taught. But you can like apply to the you can go to the academy and and become a uh, like if that's what you want to do, you can do that. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, this is a Star Trek. I know. Yeah. Yeah. We really do need like the tangent uh, the tangent police. <laughs> I've been noticing yeah. all the tangents. Yeah. And uh, another thing is like, what about phones? Are they not phoning him? Like, um, you haven't come into work today. <laughs> like, that was my initial how's, thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it's just like, how's, how's that stress leave, uh, stress leave going there, Jim? <laughs> or Nair? No. Yeah. Uh, two, 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 two. And then... Another thought that I had... Was that... Uh, this is more of a thing where there is actually a town with undead walking a- around but it's like a uh, fable so they're all wearing glamours okay fable as in the the comic book not the game yeah. okay yeah. i was like i'm was immediately like, thinking of the game <laughs> yeah i mean it was like it's like was there was there a town where like the Bal- there was like a town of Balverines that were just like <laughs> as humans? <laughs> no, the spoiler at the end is you find out that every single person you've ever talked to is actually a zombie. Oh god, they're all glamour. Yeah, yeah, magic. But yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that they're all wearing glamours, and then he has some genetic disposition or something to see through the glamour that activated so he can actually see them for what they are. Oh, so we're getting to some. <laughs> And the one Naruto sort of bullshit going on here, and that one guy that was like dressed relatively nice, yeah, and it was, it was like, because he could afford better glamour. Yeah, he was the high, he was the high class like, yeah. glamour. So like, you can only kind of see through it, but not really. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Yes. yes, nice. I actually like that idea. Mm-hmm. Might have to steal that for a, for a game scenario. <laughs> you guys yes. all wake up one day. Everyone around you is horrifying undead monstrosities. <laughs> What do you do? Yep. They're not attacking you, but they're just hor- rolling roll sand. Roll sand again. Oh, roll another one. Yeah, you get three sands. <laughs> look under your table. Uh, look under your look under your chair. There's another sand roll. <laughs> Preemptively before the game, you take like a d20 for or, or, not d20. Sorry, a uh, uh, percentile. For each player, and you you put you roll it under their their chair for, for, just to prepare for this line. You leave it there, yeah. and then look under your chair. There's another sandal. I rolled it for you earlier. <laughs> you don't have to do that shit. I did it for you. <laughs> nice. All right, so I'm gonna be checking under the chair all the time. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> all right. So continuing on that thought process of it's just glamours, and he can see through them. Um, it's really just unfortunate that he's in that town at that time. Yeah. And, I mean, he doesn't have to worry about the undead because of the uh, Supernatural Task Force treaty with the undead. Yeah, they're actually not, like, violent at all. It's just humanity has, has proposed, uh, generated that, that uh, rumor, that horror, that heinous legend about them. Mm-hmm. So they're just quarantined to this town to live happily. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like it's literally like Hotel Transylvania, except a village yep. <laughs> or a yeah. town. Yeah. It's town Transylvania. <laughs> it's town Romero. Yeah, that's gonna be the town's name, Romero. <laughs> it's gotta Romero be Township. <laughs> yeah, Romero Township. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, we need to. I, God damn it! I want to run that game. Yeah. Like, and it wouldn't even be like you guys wouldn't even be part of the SMTF. You'd just be like people that moved to this town, unknowing that what's going on. Yeah. 
And we somehow got through the blockade. Yeah, you somehow, or, or you just like they they let, they do let occasionally let some people like in like normal regular people like live there. Um, but yeah, you yeah, and then you just realize that you guys are like have that ability to like see through the glamour, and so like it's like, <gasps> and then like at the end of the game, or so like the SNTF come, comes rolling in, it's like. It's like, yeah, excuse me, sir. Uh, you're actually uh, violating uh, Treaty 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that it just happens to be that one. But a, that's what it is. Yeah, it was a very uh, it, uh, happy accident there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah. And then, like, thinking about how this actually equates into real world. Do you remember... Way back when, this is probably late 2000s, when they took flesh flavored tofu off the market. <sighs> Hugh Fu. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That Are product. You serious? A food supplementary for cannibals. Yeah. yeah. You see, that product was actually created by the undead, and they were marketing to cannibals to try and broaden or the in, market. Or bring in some extra income to the town. Yeah. 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 And yes, I'm being dead serious because I actually knew a guy from college who got taken to uh, got uh, got taken off a bus, like a public bus, by the cops, um, and like was uh, put in like like one overnight prison cafe or overnight like jail for discussing with a complete stranger on the public transit um, about the merits of cannibalism in our society using hufu as a as a re, as a uh, food supplement. And the bus driver got freaked out and called the cops. So the next bus stop, he got pulled. Uh, he got pulled out off the bus. Wow. Yeah, that's why he was. He was actually. That's why he was uh, gone for like a, a week from col- uh, from our college classes and stuff because he was at the uh, the, ho- the local hospital's uh, mental uh, institution to get a uh, get a certificate of, of sanity. <laughs> that's fucked up. We're talking about the merits of cannibalism in our society. How could there be any? He he was he argued it. I don't remember it because it was years ago. <laughs> That's fucked up. That's how I met him. Basically, it was like uh, that's like, all the first impression. Yeah, that was like I think year that, that was week two. I think was when I actually first met him, and it was because he missed the first week of college. Wow, <laughs> of his college classes because of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, college. <laughs> Yeah. Cultus College was fun. <laughs> Sorry. Pretty fucked up over there, it seems. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's the end of my uh, thoughts there. All right. Game or yellow? Let's see if there's anything left for me. Um, so, yeah. Um, my first note I wrote down is after reading the entire thing, um, the first thought I had is just that essentially, we, we've kind of gone over it, that he's crazy. He's watched too many zombie movies in his life, and he's seeing everyone as zombies, but they're just normal-ass people. Yeah. So, like, there's not a problem at all, and he's just insane. And then, um, this has been kind of brushed on a little bit, but, like, it's not, it's both explained well and not explained well what it actually looks like outside. Because, mm-hmm. essentially, all that's explained outside is, um, well, I'll just read it. I look outside on the streets and watch them shamble around, emitting guttural groans and moans. Their bodies have been mutilated and their souls extinguished into nothing. Their lifeless eyes glance over at me and stare for a while, and then they turn and continue to walk down the street. Great, but is the street pristine? Are there still people driving around in cars? Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Is yeah. shit on fire? Is there dead bodies everywhere? I, I hear you. Like, essentially them walking down the street, are they just on the sidewalks? <laughs> like just functioning normally, I, I hear you. But they just look like zombies. And if this story was written, a little bit, uh, this story was intended to be written a little bit longer. Yes, you could get that more information. But I don't really feel it's necessary because you can insert your own like idea of what the the neighborhood looks like. Yeah, but as we've seen, like the more we read this, the more everything we've just been told and assumed changes. Yeah. Like repeatedly through the story to the point that. What you read at the start and what you read at the end, you have a completely different idea of what's going on. Mm-hmm. So nothing is really solidified. But mm-hmm. that's also how people sometimes write stories. So that you can, like, it's part of the journey. It's not part of the destination. It's about learning on the way. It's, you can't, like, just immediately ingrain in somebody's head everything that's going on. Because that's, that's boring. Like, it's, better, it's sometimes better to have this play out and, like, read what's going on. And then find out what happens at the end. Like... Otherwise, because like when you're reading at the beginning and like you're starting to like you have like a preconceived notion, and then it, the story presents something different at the end, 
even though like it uh, naturally it got to that point, that preconceived notion is on you, not the, the author. Yeah, so it's essentially putting blame on the user for any faults in the story. But that's because that's what I mean, that, that, that is what you're doing. Like, I, you're I'm just saying that's a cheap that. way to get around it. Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't the, agree with that. The like, problem is a problem I have, which is the ending causes that section to implode on itself because it doesn't make sense for the ending. Okay. Well, except for the the part that, like, over the years and months and shit, he's gone more and more insane. That's why yeah. it's so different. Yeah, that part makes sense. But that early description of mm-hmm. what's outside and then the later description of, oh, it's just regular people, it doesn't mesh. Because he's supposedly writing it all in one sitting and explaining what happened. But then, And also, the you, quote I just read, yeah. I look outside at the streets and see the mutilated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Current tense. <laughs> so when is all this taking place? Okay, so there's a problem with tense in there. Yeah. Know. It's confusing. Yeah. But yeah, if it said that there was all the cars were parked or destroyed, the building was on fire across the street, like you know shit's going down, or even just saying there are no cars driving by anymore, all I see on the streets are Boy. the walking dead. Yeah, like okay, well, you couldn't say, you couldn't say The Walking Dead because that's that's covered right now. But <laughs> could you actually not? I don't know. They're they're dead that are walking. Yeah, I think you have to like you have to try to get around that somehow. But it's also free on the internet. It, it, yeah, boss yeah, is so yeah, fucking. Yeah. It's the Walking Undead. There you go. Yeah, it's there you go. The Walking Undead. Yeah. The shambling. No. The not, shambling undead. The shambling not alive. <laughs> well, we know. Yeah, we know that they're, they, we know that they shamble. So yeah, the shambling undead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Either way. Long story short. The I would like more descriptor to the place that he's in and less descriptor on the zombies themselves. Right. Or maybe same amount on the zombies. It's just it because nothing is said about the world, they might as well be walking down just like a blank street of nothing. Like okay. walking down like you draw a line that's the street and just like a black white piece of paper with a line as a street just have uh like very detailed zombies walking down the like, street. <laughs> I hear you, but at the same time, like, that just seems like it's lazy on the reader's side. Like, you can't envision just your own street, like, in your head. Like, yes, I can. Or, like, like, but the problem is, I don't know if it's normal. I don't know if there's cars or not. I don't know if it's destroyed. I don't know if the zombies are walking on the sidewalk. I don't know if they're walking on the road. Yeah, it's leaving it's, so much well, up to interpretation. Yeah, yeah. I guess, but, like, I don't know. Like, I mean, like, it, it, okay. yeah. My problem with this in most stories, and I've brought this up before. Oh, I know, I know. If, if there's too little information, it's like the writer isn't wanting to, like, they're, they're not wanting to tell too much of a story. They want the reader to do some of the work for them. Yeah. Like, I have to build the world for them. Yeah. Sure. Well, and the, the problem that we run into, especially with Undead, yeah. is that he's explaining that there's Undead outside so because of the ingrained in society that oh, it's an apocalypse, that means that the cars are on fire and the building is on, next door is on fire Mm -hmm. and stuff is just generally hit the fan. Yeah. That when it gets to the ending, it's like, oh, it wasn't like that all along. You go, what the heck? I don't know. Because you're you're painting the picture in your mind that is based on assumptions in society and how you would expect it to go and then it's broken because of the fact that it's not that. And he gives such detailed description of how mutilated the zombies are out his front door on the street. They go, okay, they're definitely zombies. Yeah. And then later, they're just regular guys. Because it's like, Sandy is... He's insane. Yeah, because he's insane. So, I don't know, like, honestly, this never bugs me, so I don't... It's always, like, not, not... Bad or weird, but just like interesting how like other people have like such a problem with it because I just like I don't know why I don't understand why you guys have such a problem with it. First read through, did you envision it as a destroyed city street or pristine city street? I just envisioned it as like, all right, there's zombies there, so it's just an empty street, and there's people except for the shamblers that are just walking around on the sidewalks or all over the place, all over the place. All right. right. It, it's to me like that kind of stuff like is just background noise or superfluous when I'm like reading that in a story like this. But if you want to get engrossed in a story, you need to like get into the world that this character's in. 
Yes, but you can also add your own stuff. Like that's why like people put yeah. in like it's like reading between the lines. Yeah, like, we you know. added our own stuff and it yeah. destroyed it. Okay. That's what we're saying. <laughs> Is that we're using our imaginations? And you're not, amazingly. I am, actually. Um, but you guys are... You guys thought of it, like, imagined it differently. So, it's the beauty of diversity in opinion and imagination. The long and short of it is, as soon as I imagine something, I read the next line, and I have to get my eraser out. So, it's okay. not painting a picture. It is very, very lightly sketching a picture. Because you have to be able to erase it immediately after. Yeah. I, I, That's my problem. Yeah, oh, like fair, fair enough. So moving on. Yeah, we could. Yeah, we could literally go up. Like, we could continue ba- uh, hammering this down. But like, yeah, the point is we all have different opinions with this mm. that, that topic. So mm. much. And then um, my my next point is essentially about the grocery store situation where he walks out there and gets groceries and comes back, but he doesn't say whether or not you had to pay for them or if you just stole them, like this is already mentioned. <laughs> but if he does pay for them, that that already kind of uh, puts out right there that everything is normal. Yeah. Because if he's... I, I don't know <laughs> how... As long as for some reason, like, accept money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, which, I mean, he already got a check for one. So. <laughs> yeah. They were in the story, so... Yeah. It's just... It's so and, like, when he was going to the grocery store, it was seeming like he had to sneak around all the zombies and just take what he needed and leave and sneak out. But then realize that there was no point in doing that because they weren't going after him. Yeah, but, okay. If this is in the same world at that point as it is at the end, where he has a zombie boss yeah. giving him money, then when he, go- when he went to the grocery store, there were zombies that were manning the tills. Grocery there were shopping o- as well. There were other zombies grocery shopping. And, um... That means that he went in, got stuff, and stole it, and snuck it without the zombie security guards catching him. <laughs> yeah, so he's basically, because of his psychosis, or because of his uh, delusions, um, he has become a criminal. <laughs> he somehow shoplifted, like, an entire yeah. like yeah. grocery shop, yeah. shopping uh, trip worth yeah. of stuff. Yeah. And, and he keeps going back. Like, it's like, like he's catching a thing. He Unless, <laughs> in his head, he's, like, duping out and running around. And stuff. But in reality, his body is going through the, the daily doldrums of just, like, you know, paying and some of that. And then he's just basically negating that in his mind. Maybe. I don't know. Or Again, we have, de- we have delivered, deliberated, deliberated that he is insane. <laughs> or it's a dystopian future. Mm-hmm. Because there is a, re- a grocery store out there that you can literally just put things in your cart and then walk and in. then walk out, and it basically knows who you are because of your phone. Yeah. So he's paying for it without paying for it in the conventional sense. Mm-hmm. Because he's bringing his phone with him there. Yeah. But why would he bring his phone if he doesn't talk to anyone? Because he thinks he's the only one alive. His phone's probably going to be charged. <laughs> yeah, and there's no mention of phones or anything. Yeah. Everyone's chipped. Yeah, they've all, got, they've all got the mark of the beast in the back of their head. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 Done. Cool. Done, done, done. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all I got, though. All right. All right. So, final thoughts. So, for me, the story is interesting if you take it as a little introspective narrative about a person seemingly in a zombie apocalypse or going insane kind of thing, like the delusionary um, idea we had. However, it's not all that scary. Like, maybe it's a little creepy in its theme of, like, the, like being surrounded by the undead and then realizing that you are one. Um, it might make you think about it, like, about the story, about what you're reading and stuff of like that, and what it's trying to say, but that's about it to me. So... I guess partial recommendation, like if you want to read something that will make you talk about it afterward, that's about it. But otherwise, like, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like middling to me. Uh, personally, I like the idea, but the execution for me falls short. <laughs> And the reason why it falls short is because instead of the, oh, what a twist at the end, he's, he's undead. Uh, an undead as well, it's, 
oh crap, that just destroyed the other portion of the story that I just read based on how I read it, and now I really don't like the story. Fair. Uh, And I knew what they were going for from the first sentence. Yep. Yeah. So the twist was not that much of a twist. So I well, for just, you, you can't. I, I cannot yeah. recommend the story. That's okay. fair. Uh, what are you laughing at? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just pleasantly That's waiting. It's so funny. It's fine. Well, for me, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the audience doesn't know anything that's going on. Right no, that's fine. Um, <laughs> nor will they. No. Just to get no just, context. Just imagine, you know, theater of the mind. Let it, let it evolve. As no, no. Can. You, I can't <laughs> leave it open to you. <laughs> Sorry. You should be. Um, <sighs> the idea of the story I like, the lack of information I don't like. Uh, so the most I could do is a, a light partial recommendation. No, maybe yes. Yeah, low yeah. partial, but like, it just it, it keeps annoying me repeatedly. I, I hate not like for me. If you're trying to tell me a story, tell me a story. I don't want to have to do fifty percent of the work for you essentially. Because the most that we get out of this is it's a guy he's surrounded by zombies. And then he joins the zombies. Then I had to do everything else in my mind. What? Like, here's the thing. Is he actually surrounded by zombies? Or is he just delusional? Or is he... Like, this one is one of those... Like, the reason why it's left open-ended is to make you think. Like, to make you question that. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, that's why it is not a definitive story here. It is left out to, like, your... It left... The the concept that the person was trying to, like, get down on paper Mm -hmm. is there. But... The story itself is open ended to make you think what's going on. Like to make it wants you to wants the reader to question what's going on. Mm-hmm. And just just for me, like generally speaking, the longer passes we do, I tend to like more mm-hmm. because they have time to sit down with you and flesh things out and tell you what's going on. Yeah. Where short ones, there's only so much time, so I understand a lot of it has to be left open to interpretation. If you're trying to focus specifically on writing a small story, yeah. you have to leave stuff out. And if that's the case, fine. But if they were wanting to go longer, but they didn't, they just simply didn't want to uh, waste time describing things or anything like that, then, I don't know, a, a couple of lines to describe the surroundings would do a lot. And if it was switched over to... Uh, like a journal entry format situation, I would appreciate that more because you could see day by day or month by month or year by year, whatever, yeah. how he's devolving. Because as it is, he's posting all of this on the last day. Yeah. And speaking about things in the current tense as well, which is weird. Yeah, like maybe, like... Hmm. Like I... I so if it was a first-person perspective... If it was a first-person perspective uh, for like day one, day two, day three, and then the next month, and then the next year. We're also assuming like those that, are the parts. Yeah, we are also assuming that this is supposed to be like written as like the person, like this guy. Like this is something that happens in stories a lot, where like we're we're used to people like it's like once somebody starts writing this down, like this is like them writing it down. But sometimes like stories and narratives like they do that, but it's really just them like inner monologuing basically, like from time from day by day, like present day. It's still but first it's, person. It is first person, but if it's, it's not written, written, thir- it's not written down. Uh, but it's not supposed to be treated as somebody writing it down. It's just supposed to be somebody's inner monologue, mm-hmm. or like the, he's the narrator, but also the omniscient. Oh, well, not omniscient, but the the um, like. It's not supposed to be like treated as like an immer- like that kind of immersion level where like oh somebody wrote this down is, and posted this. Like you're just supposed to read it for the concept, not for the like for a, as a solid. Like, this is in the world lore kind of thing. I get that, but if you can't get immersed in a story, you're not going to get creeped out or scared by a story. And that's one of my big problems with this. It's not creepy. All right, fair. Because mm-hmm. the, the creepiest part about this is just seeing in, in the um, in the head of someone who's kind of cracked a little bit. Yeah. And what's going on, we have to fill in the blanks as to why. But yeah. So, long story short, not really... Maybe kinda. Yeah, <laughs> middling. Maybe. Yeah. Like <laughs> middle low. Like middle. Like no, middle. it's like forty-five degree down. Okay. Low. Yeah. 
Like, it, there's something there, but generally, yeah. All right, so this was basically middling to nothing. <laughs> or middling to would not recommend. Kind of. Well, because I, rec- I kind of like halfway recommended This it. is why I use numbers or <laughs> percentages. 25% recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the quickest way to do it. Sure. Because 50 is like, meh. 100% yeah. is like, yeah. And 75 is like, yeah. And zero is Jeff the Kill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's the rating system. Jeff the I may, Killer. I may have to make you read uh, that Jeff the Killer story at some point down the road. I ran out ages ago. No, the the, the one by there is no other one. <laughs> stop. There are multiple ones. No, there, there are multiple stop. iterations. Stat. <laughs> no, I will never stop. S T A P. Stat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that was this week's episode. If you like what you heard, if you didn't, leave us a comment in the comment section below where this gets posted. Whether it be on Kiwi Six Facebook, YouTube, or Tumblr. Uh, you can also check us out on uh, uh, Twitter. Uh, I'm at Review Cultist. Mikey's at E Stands for Evil. Gamer in Yellow is at The Gamer in Yellow, but without the W. Uh, you can leave, uh, leave us a rating and review on iTunes. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, every little bit helps. Um, you can also get us, uh, send us emails at aldenterigamortis at gmail.com. That's A L D N T E R I. G-A-M-O-R-T-I-S at gmail.com where you can also leave us suggestions for other creep bosses you'd like us to discuss on the show. Uh, and you can also check out the title cards for each episode on crazonstudios.tumblr.com crazon.deviantart.com or on our YouTube channel Al Dente Rigor Mortis where you can check out the videos of each episode. And if you'd like to help support the show you can go to Patreon. Look up Al Dente Rigor Mortis and select the backer tier you'd like to support us at. We have $2 and $5 tier. You can check it, uh, our $2 tier gets you uh, special episodes such as Al Dente Real Talk, where we talk about films and movies uh, based around or have inklings of creepypasta style horror. Uh, actual play Rigor Mortis, where we have uh, where we play tabletop games and we record them, and they are usually horror scenarios that have to do with creepypastas. And then we have the five dollar tier, which is our early access episodes, where you can get them on Tuesdays rather than Thursdays. Um, and then my fellow co-hosts have their own show on our Patreon. Uh, yes, El Dante Reloaded at the $5 tier, where Mikey and I go back to the good, the bad, and the ugly passes that the cultists have done in the past. Well, the cultists and the doctor, rather. Um, read them and see what our thoughts are on them. And then El Dante Revelations at the $2 tier, where Mikey and I continue those thoughts after actually listening to the old uh, recordings that the cultists and the doctor did. Um, see how our opinions differ, and possibly have a mind-breaking revelation while doing so. Cool. And making sure that the art is told who's boss. Sure. <laughs> um, so, until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. I am Mikey. The E stands for evil. And I'm the Gamer in Yellow. And this has been Al Dente Mortis. Sleep well. <laughs> <laughs>